Hmm. So yeah, I took apart this drawer and you can see how I inverted the um, surround. I didn't do a very good job of putting it back together because it's actually very, very hard to put back together. But this was the driver that I took apart to do all the tests on. And this is the same driver where all the magnets in the center basically just exploded out. Like, like as if, you know, it was basically, a, it was a tripwire, like proprietary thing they had going on where they had a, a stack of magnetic disks. I wish I had one around me, but they cracked actually. They're they were about the size of half a casino chip, and they stacked up to about, about here, and you could actually stack them into a column, interestingly enough, and they stick together, and it would, for, it would form a column. But as soon as you would like you know move it a little bit, jostle it, they'd all fling apart, and they're all neodymium, which means that they have, they're very powerful. So like the amount of force, I have a video that I um, could probably post after this where it shows like just the amount of force that it has. Each individual chip, um, chip would start repelling at about this distance, about a foot, I'm sorry, half a foot away. And that's one chip, one of the little, of the, the wafers. And there are multiple wafers stacked all the way up here. And so when they flew apart, it was pretty much impossible for me to track. I didn't ex obviously I didn't expect it to, to do that, so it was impossible for me to actually like reattach them the way that they were initially attached, because they actually fit together and attach whichever direction you would want, and they also naturally repel in either direction. So, it's very very interesting how they did that and I guess that's how they were able to store so much power within such a tiny confines of tiny um um very confined amount of space but you look at the groove in here right this little wave this is actually a composite woofer they use poly because these striations here if you can see inside are actually little fins um turn on the flashlight um, kind of trying to, yeah, trying this thing. Could you see the the fins in there? Um, kind of hard to tell. Hannah is in it. Yeah, you kind of. You hear me flicking at them. Yeah, well, those fins are these striations right here, and this right here is actually the waveguide that's part of the composite so this thing would fit basically the way kev's been doing things is, see how it fits snugly right in there so it becomes one with the woofer and originally the surround actually protruded outward but there's actually a piece that fits over this entire thing that would actually allow this part right here is this the edge of the um surround of the um woofer i did a terrible job of reattaching this but you see how there's there's actually a, a kind of a lip right here it's not just flat well the woofer actually has a rim and the rim is actually it protrudes out out beyond the, the full um height of the surround so that the the parabola actually fans out and meets with the rubber um facade baffle that fits over the front and you can see it right here so this is how it would regularly work so this is actually the whole entire thing put together the way it should be um, let me turn auto focus on Zoom, out of focus. Yeah, okay. So you can see how like this right here is composite. And this works as one solid diaphragm, right? But this is actually a separate piece right here. And these striations, each of these striations behind them is what 
basically looks like a heat sink but the edges around here are very shallow they basically they end up pretty much disappearing towards the edge while the inner rim is about as tall as this is wide um i should check that again they might even be taller i actually have a suspicion that they're, they're actually taller but, um or even in just exactly the same but um the if you measure from here to there versus from here to there it's actually again the use of fee and that's something that you'll find kef has done a lot of work with ever since they started doing that with the 2007s and maybe there's probably others that they did before the 2007s that i hadn't noticed but check this out if you look at the shape of this like the whole body as far as the width to the height that's phi right there's a subwoofer that's what they call the subwoofer but it really actually functions as a low frequency it's a low frequency section to this thing yeah so yeah you can see how like when I flip back and forth like a lot of care was added and they had to make sure that they really fully exploited the whole principle of fee allowing for it to you know a lot of um woo woo go comes out of like magic numerology and stuff and that's not what i'm talking about like V has some actual real life you know use as far as its ability to like mute sound for instance like if you were to place that's why people prefer placing their subwoofer somewhere around like two fifths that proportion that two fifths proportion is basically phi it's pretty much like because phi is one to one point six around there one point one point six one eight to or one to zero point six one eight either way so this would be point six and this would be the one the point six and the one and the back of this is rounded and this is also fully rounded so this is actually like like this is basically a full torus the way that works and it's actually designed this thing only weighs about uh, i'd say 30 pounds it's very very easy to move and it's designed to be easily movable i just stack stuff i stack toys on top of that a little bit but um um i often move this thing myself and that's why i leave the little feet on is because when you place it on the ground it actually couples and i put it underneath in the projection room underneath the couch and it just creates this cool like couch rumbler and if i already have two subwoofers in there but it makes it fun just having like you know the ability to feel like they have the couch rumbling back and forth since i already have the two subwoofers in there as you know left and right since all of my systems are always parallel I will split them down the middle so I have no like you know zero zero crosstalk. Um when I plug when I take these, I could actually put one to the left and one to the right of the of any of the seats and actually feel the ride essentially. So even you know, if I'm playing a video game and ex an explosion lands to my right, I actually feel it to you know, right the couch actually rumbles that direction versus the other way. Or if like a big monster stomping around me, I feel them actually stomping around me on the floor, and actually feels like the floor is actually moving and with along with their footsteps, which is really cool. And but you know you could you don't have to actually do that. You don't really need the floor to move in normal situations because there's two basically ways to listen to speakers, right? There's the way where you just listen to, where you're listening to music, right? You know the song. And you're listening to it, you're listening to all the details, and you love the song, and you're just listening to like, probably heard it like a hundred thousand times, and you can still listen to it and find new things every single time. And then there's the other type of speaker, like the 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 live sound, as we call it in America, which was defined by horns, which were defined basically by JBL, and then clips, where like you know in movie theaters they're just buy like a, a whole bunch of jbl speakers they're all the same 
and just scatter them around everywhere. So they use the same speaker for the front, the sides, and then they'll have the sub like I think they usually use like four subwoofers along the sides. But having the ability to use just one JBL speaker that has a horn has incredibly high efficiency. So you can have this really loud sound with just you know I'm guessing what like sixteen like or eight depending on the number of like depending on the number of rows, and then that's that's how they do the surround sound in a movie theater. But in a house, unless you're actually unless you actually have two rows, which we actually do have in our production theater, and in that case, I do enable the the rear um, side speakers. But normally, we don't actually need to use the surround sound because stereo actually already contains the surround sound. And so what's interesting about these speakers is that they're basically tested. They're designed to do something that I've been trying to explain for a while, which is that um, the way it's kind of like the way the Voight pipe is considered the best speaker ever. And it uses kind of the same, the same um, proportions. And the reason the Voight pipe works so well is because the front of the speaker is playing at you directly while the back of the speaker is bouncing inside of this tube the pipe right and then it exits out the port and that slight delay gives you the sound of the 3d recording of the stereo the out of phase recording what would be behind the cross mic array it gives that to you more with more emphasis because it actually lags it actually takes more time for it to go and bounce back and forth behind the speaker all the way down the void pipe and then exit out the pipe, out the port, and then that's able to sprawl and hit all your walls and everything. And it creates like this ambience of sound that allows for your mains to have spatial cues that would actually be completely immersive around you rather than just being in front of you. The speaker right here was actually designed so that it would have the same phenomenon where it's basically a void pipe that's been compressed down to as small as possible. And they were able to do that because they were able to get, this was the first time they were able to get their, um, their true single point driver all the way up to 55 kilohertz. And it was actually the last time they actually bothered making a tweeter that could play up to 55 kilohertz. Plus or minus, um, 3db even um there um even the current blade the flagship only goes up to like maybe i think it was something like 48 and i might be generous there plus or minus six and then like maybe like 30 plus or minus th um 3db because for the most part like you don't really need it need it to go up to 30 like anything where we're anywhere past 30 past 20 i mean and according to studies i've seen it only seems to really matter at around 28 when you could actually hear um, at least detect brain waves where you could actually e enable the brick wall filter or remove the brick wall filter at 28 hertz oh, sorry 28 kilohertz and you could actually see the like the theta waves actually get um, flipped on and off essentially so the person wouldn't even know they're actually more immersed with the brick wall filter off and the whole entire sound bound with going up to 28 kilohertz while they are actually still feeling it enough that the scanner the the, the mri base not mri sorry what's whatever ah that the you know the sensor used to um detect brain waves could actually detect the theta waves and these tests were actually done multiple times i have a link where it was actually um, this other guy helped me collect like i think six different studies that can were confirmed from japan to the west all over of this phenomenon and one of the main reasons why people think that sound only goes up to 20 kilohertz and goes down to 20 is mostly because people tested with headphones and headphones are just much different than what you would actually hear. Hold on. 
So for that, so headphones are actually just much different than what you would actually hear in a room, because in a room, what you would ideally hear is exactly what you would hear just like when you're in a club, which I like to use a tunnel as a metaphor, because a lot of people. Like if you go to Central Park, a lot of people will like to sing inside that tunnel, or like to just shout inside the tunnel. But if you hear, if you listen to a, a, a performance inside that tunnel, you'll notice that there'll be a guy singing. Right, that guy is an omnidirectional source. He's a single point omnidirectional source. Right, but yet you could still hear him as far as where he is around you. So your ears are triangulating him. You know where he is, as far as how far he is away from you, as you back up or, or enter the tunnel. But the reason why that works is because you he you could actually hear his voice coming at you directly, and you could hear the trailing of his voice coming at you as it resonates from the half pipe, the tube, the half half port, the tunnel. So that tunnel is the ambient. That actually allows for the context, that allows for you to have spatial cues even in a monophonic setting, where he is essentially a monophonic output source. Well, thanks.